Assalamu alaikum family, peace, healing, and light, and welcome, 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 welcome back to another episode of Healing with Angelica's podcast, where we discuss all things healing. And if you are new to the show, welcome, 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 beautiful souls. On today's episode, we have an amazing guest joining us today, my brother, your brother, brother Hashim Hakim, as we'll be discussing today's topic, the path. Brother Hashim, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? I'm doing blacktastic. I'm good to I'm good to be here. Happy to be here. But I want to thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for your consistency. Thank you for overcoming what a lot of us have not overcome yet, and that's fear. You do not be playing. I'm proud of you. I'm proud. <laughs> Oh my goodness, brother Hashim! It's it's been a journey because it took it took a lot to get here, mm -hmm. you know. So man, if we go back all the way from our first videos to now, whoo, yeah. But praise be to Allah. Thank you so much for those kind words, brother Hashim. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't know my brother, just for those who don't know, now y'all should know my brother now. If you don't know my brother, brother Hashim, do you mind letting our audience know just a little bit more about you? So. uh my name is Brother Hashim Hakim. I am uh, a proud follower of Farrakhan, number one, first and foremost. A proud member to, of the Nation of Islam. Glad to be born in this dispensation of time. I'm the brother who freestyled with Jay-Z and DMX in the movie Backstage. I'm a singer, writer, producer, the father of many recording artists, but the one that's popping right now is Golden Child. I'm wearing his shirt. He just released his new album called War Cry. Yeah. That's going crazy. But right now, I'm involved in something that I found my calling, Sister Angelica. I've been in the nation a minute trying to figure out, am I supposed to be doing this? Am I supposed to be mm -hmm. doing this? What am I supposed to be doing? Am I going to be a part of this? And then I get bored. But I found something that I have not let go since I've been on the path myself. I am not the path. I am on the path myself. And that's teaching and training our brothers and sisters how to overcome rejection and engage with people from all walks of life. And when I say all walks of life, I mean all walks of life and how to turn that light on and touch the God in them proper. So it's called the path and I'm, I'm, I'm on the path and I'm going to be on it till God come for me. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Praise be to Allah. And I'm looking forward to be discussing this topic. Talk about this beautiful curriculum that you came up with that Allah put in your mind and inspired you to do. So beautiful. So now let's get started on today's episode, The Path. And please, I always say this now. Don't let me be the only one asking questions now, y'all. Take your time. Y'all can ask questions. Please, 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 if you have any questions for my guest, Brother Hashim Hakim, please put it in the comment box below. So, in a world where connection is currency and resilience is a key to success, the path three, our way of devotion, is a beckon of hope for those navigating the intricate path of engagement, rejection, and recruitment. This powerful curriculum is not just about to, to tix it. I'm sorry, tactics. Sorry. It's about transforming rejection into opportunity, turning encounters into meaningful connections, and inspiring others to join your journey, embarking on a transformative journey where every rejection is a stepping stone, every encounter is a chance to learn, and every recruitment is a testament to your unwavering dedication. Praise be to Allah. Alhamdulillah, I'm looking forward to this. So let's go ahead and break it down. We got to go to the root. You know, what's going on here? So <laughs> that brings me to my first question, Brother Hashim. Now, do you mind letting our audience know in, in more detail? Do you mind explaining what is the path? So yes, that's a good question. And uh, the path is really um a, a curriculum that teaches the brother or the sister or the student or the child even how to counter rejection it's it's basically how to counter rejection and deliver 
what it is you're trying to deliver, what it is you're trying to sell, who it is you're trying to marry, who it is you're trying to court. It is just the mind, really dealing with the mind and how the mind of God works within us. So the PATH is an acronym, P-A-T-H. The P stands for patience. You have to be patient when learning any endeavor, patient with yourself, patient with the person teaching you, and patient with your understanding of what it is you're learning. Patient. Patience. So the A stands for attraction. You have to be attractive in deeds, thoughts, and action. You have to be attractive to whoever it is you're trying to attract. You have to be attractive to the person that you're trying to deliver your message to. Because if you're attractive, if you're attractive, this person will be more susceptible to listen to what it is you have to say, hear you out. I, I thought I had it on do not disturb. If you're attractive, then that helps you too. When you look good, you'll feel good. When you feel good, you'll perform good. Mm -hmm. So attraction works both ways. Depending on the fish you're trying to catch, that's going to determine the bait that you use because all fish mm -hmm. don't bite the same bait. And all people are not attracted to the same thing. So with the PATH curriculum, we're going to fill your tackle box up with whatever you need to talk to, whoever you need to talk to, to deliver whatever message you want to deliver. The T, it stands for technique, handling people, technique. Everybody does not like to be handled the same way. Mm. Everybody does not learn from reading. Everybody does not learn from speaking. Everybody does not learn from visual. So the path is a combination of speaking, visuals, even passion, all combined in how you talk to the person. It mm -hmm. teaches you to find out if the person is visual or not. It teaches you to go into the straight lane of the person you're talking to and talk in their language. That's mm -hmm. a problem many of us have. We don't know how to speak the person's language who we're speaking to. Mm -hmm. So we speak to everybody like we, like, we, like, like we speak to ourselves or like we want to be spoken to. That's not the case with the past. So it's going to teach you the technique of speaking to whoever the person is you're talking to. It's going to teach you their language. And then the H stands for humility. That's the way of inheritance. You have to be humble. You can't be aggressive. You can't be cocky. You can't be arrogant. In fact, scripture teaches us that humility is the way of inheritance. Mm -hmm. Inheritance. So you want something, you want to sell, you want the wife, you want the husband, you want whatever it is, you better be humble. Confidence is okay. Confidence is okay. But arrogance, negative. So mm -hmm. patience, attraction, technique, and humility. So there's three books. Book one, wrote in 2012 here in St. Louis. Book two, I think we finished that up in, I'm not sure what city I finished it up in, but book two uh, is out now. And now book three is being reviewed by the executive council right now. So it's not out but it's being reviewed by the executive council. So we're working on book three now. Ooh, I love how you wrote that down, Brother Hashim. And what really got me is the fact of how we're able to use this curriculum in all areas of our life. Um, it's so many different things that we as, you know, the we as people, you know, don't really understand and know in regards to how to interact with, other people, how to speak to them, how to talk to them. And a lot of the things that we are used to doing, we believe that it's okay to do it with others. And like you said, you know, you know, the sometimes fish don't like like they 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 picky. They like different baits. You know, they they you, you can't expect to to continue on, you know, putting the same bait and think that you're gonna get different fish. Exactly. You know, so exactly. I love that. I love how I, I love this curriculum that you have and um you said right now it's not out but it's getting reviewed right <laughs> yes <Yeah>. yes <laughs> book three is being reviewed book okay. one and two are available okay yes 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 praise be to a lot and that brought me to my next question for you and please again if you guys are i need some interactions in these comment boxes man i, I need to know that y'all and put y'all firebox in the comment box um uh, another question is, can you explain the key principles of the PATH approach? Yes. So there's five steps to the PATH. So now 
in regards to recruiting, um, and that's where we're at right now, um, especially those of us in the Nation of Islam, recruiting has never been easier than it is in this dispensation of time because it's not hard for people to see that what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has been teaching us is, has been the truth, more relevant today than it has been in the past. And now people are starting to understand, hold on, ha, 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 ha. they've been right all the time. And so it's not that hard today. So using the Final Call newspaper, let's talk about recruiting, whether it's door to door, intersection, or you're on the about. Let's use the Final Call newspaper. The first thing you do, whether you're selling anything, whatever it is, just say whatever it is, just listen to the steps. The first thing you do is greet the person. You don't hold your product up. You don't have your product all in their face while you're greeting them. <laughs> hi, hi, my name is, no, no, just greet them. How you doing, brother? How you doing, sister? How you doing, ma'am? How you doing, soldier? What's up, king? Whatever the person you're talking to, whoever they are, speak to them in their language. What's up, champ? Greet them. The second thing you do is tell them your purpose. People want to know why you're at their door, why you're in their face, why you're at their house, why you're at, the, why you're at their car. Tell them your purpose. I'm here to do blase, blase. Number three, number three is tell them the cost of what it is. Don't have the person guessing, waiting, giving them a whole spill, making everything sound real good. And you ain't talked about the cost yet. Mm -hmm. Tell them the cost right away. But that's just step number three. Then number four, thank them. Whether they accept what you're saying or not. Thank them. Well, thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. Maybe next time. That's how you handle a, a no or not today. Well, maybe next time. Don't take a no as just the end of the world or they hurt my feelings or they don't like me or I'm not attractive or I'm ugly. Or, no, just, just maybe next time and say it with a smile. And then the fifth thing you do as it relates to recruiting, ask them, but what do I have to do to get you to be my guest one of these days? Mm. So let's, let's, it sounds like this. How you doing, brother? We out here trying to make our community a decent and safe place to live. And if $2 is too much for you to help us in our community, we're grateful for whatever God puts on your heart. So now they're thinking, they're looking for their money. Just say they don't have it. Well, I don't have it. Well, today with the pair of training technique, they may say, I don't have it, or I don't carry cash. Mm -hmm. In the tr path training system, we have where you can have your QR code for your cash app or Zelle. And that's on the other side of a flyer. And you can say, well, this is for you. You can donate this way too. Take the final call newspaper. But what do I have to do to get you to be our guest one of these days? And due to my research, almost 10 times out of 10, they ask, well, where you are located? Mm. Almost 10 times out of 10. Probably nine times, <laughs> maybe nine out of 10. Yeah. They always ask, so, so and wh where y'all located? Yeah. And then that's where you 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 kind of they, they got the hook in them now. And you got to kind of gently, humbly reel them in. And you let them know on this flyer, and I and I and I put this in my sales training curriculum for each brother and sister. That's the that's the Moss address. This is where we locate. That's my number. If you have any questions, give me a call. That's mm -hmm. what it sounds like. It takes about 10 seconds to do that. So and it's the same thing over and over and over again. Just like fishing. You bait your hook, cash your rod, reel it in. Bait your hook over and over and over for hours. And then at the end of the day, you got a bucket full of fish. And at the end of the day, you got a moss full of gas. Mm. Keep okay. going. That's it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I love that. Oh, my gosh. It's just, ooh. It's, it, I didn't. I didn't really think of it like that, you know, and just the way we approach it really, really plays an effect on how we're able to get the people, you know, because like you said, and, and I, I can bear witness to it because, you know, I, I'm the type of person like I, I like to be talked to a certain way, you know, so if we we the, the, the typical person, the typical black person will always think we're just what y'all selling now, what y'all got now. You know, so when you're coming out on a different approach, it kind of makes them more open to seeing what you got going on. What's, what, what do you have? What can you do for me? 
for the most part. So I love that. Praise be to a lot. Now, what's key though? What's key mm -hmm. in, in, in the, the second thing? Tell them your purpose or your cause. You will find that people support causes. They want to feel like they supporting the cause, not feel like you panhandling or you begging. They want to feel like they're supporting the cause. You can be out there with children raising money for their fo football team, their peewee league. And if you deliver the cause clearly, they're going to give you the donation. Because who don't want to live in a decent and safe place to live? Even killers, drug dealers, dope boys, our brothers in street organization want to live in a decent and safe place to live. So who doesn't want to live in a decent and safe place to live? Who don't want violence re uh, reduced? Mm -hmm. who, who, who just want to die? So that's as it relates to the Final Call newspaper. Tell them your purpose. Tell them your cause. And people support causes. And I put God in it. Even with the donation, I say whatever God puts on your heart. I don't want to make it feel like I'm just out here for money because I'm not. So if, if I'm selling cell phones, I, ain't, I just ain't out here for a commission. What I'm trying to figure out is if I'm selling cell phones and I work for Cricket or Sprint, I want the person to have the best phone for what they can afford. Because mm -hmm. I know the phone in and out. I got to ask them, so so, so, what do you look for in the, in the telephone? What, what what you like doing on your phone? You, you just like talking. So the internet, you don't be online like that? Okay, <laughs> well, then we got this phone. But you, Or you like streaming. Or you like gaming. But this phone right here, so you got to know everything about the product and so you can find out, oh, this person going to like this phone right here. You just like the way it looks. But you know, right, this phone right here is, is, is not no toy right here. Now, and it's expensive. So you got to be able to break certain things down. People want to know what are they paying for? Where is this money going? How mm -hmm. is it going to help you mm -hmm. uh, help or make the world a better place? Y'all just scamming? Because people can smell fake on you. They can smell fake on you. So that was it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Don't mind me, y'all. You know, I love taking notes. You know, like I said, podcasting me is like therapy. I'm getting my little therapy session in, just trying to get all the good, get all the good juice that our guest brings on the show. So praise be to a lot. Thank you for that key principle, Brother Hashim. Now, this is a question I couldn't wait to ask because even with just um, the path being the path being um, directed to sales um, is also in correlation to just our life and things that we go through. And one thing that not I'm not speaking on everyone else, but I know me is um, just dealing with rejection. Um, rejection is not easy to handle. And sometimes I believe because we don't know how to handle rejections, sometimes we lose out on our blessings, you know? So can how can one effectively handle rejection in sales and how can handling rejection relate to real life situations? That's a beautiful question. I, I had to go back to when uh, I was first asked to distribute the Final Call newspaper and I was terrified with my suit and bow tie on. <laughs> I, I had a speech impediment. I used to stutter. I used to the, the, the more nervous I got, the more I would stutter. And I remember being on 87 in the Dan Ryan on the south side of Chicago. And at this time, the Final Call newspaper used to cost $1. And there was somebody with a dollar hanging out the window saying, I want one pointing to me because everybody was occupied. And I just froze like, can I get one? <laughs> so the lieutenant said, Hey, Brother Hashim, take the paper over there. And I just looked at him like, so he came over and talked to me. <laughs> he said, what's wrong? What, what? The person wanted the paper and you wouldn't give it to him. Are you nervous? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a young man. I'm about 20, but I'm a young man. And uh, he said, follow me. Follow me. And I'm seeing people. People young as me, people my age, people older than me, everybody is doing what they should be doing. But me, I was like, and in my head, now I can I can listen. In my head, I'm like, he ain't better than me. I had to talk to myself. <laughs> What's wrong with me? And I'm he I'm shadowing him go from car to car. 
and looking, these people are mean. These people are receptive in the way he's talking. I said, oh, I could do that. And once I got my first sale, it's 1994. It was a wrap. You can't, you can't stop me from talking. I used to be the introvert. I'm still an introvert in many ways. I got to know you, but the introvert went from, you can't stop me now. Now I don't mm -hmm. from the police. It could be President Biden walking up. You're going to get this word. In fact, <laughs> before Barack Obama was the president, uh, he was a congressman in Chicago and he got the final call newspaper. Mm. I told it to him. So I, I, you can be Jew, you can be Jehovah Witness, you're going to get this work with the pan. <laughs> so, and now, and, and I used to be like that way in, in, in many ways from sisters. They used to compliment me and I used to freeze up. I ain't know how to say, uh, and you're pretty too. I just, <laughs> I was messed up, man. I was jacked up. But now, you got to pull me back. So as it relates to relationships, I would tell people to be patient. And even with somebody not ready right now, somebody tells you I'm not ready right now. If this is the person you're really interested in, pray on it. Ask a lot to guide you and be patient. Wait. Sometimes we so quick to get in relationships just to be with somebody, just to say I'm in a situation. And you can take it from me. That's a mistake, rushing to be in a relationship when your heart is with this person and that person ain't ready. So you go rush and get with this person who's ready. It's a mistake. Mm -hmm. Patience is really key. But if that person say, I'm not ready, and you done prayed on it, be patient. Be patient. Sometimes we want to answer a lot. We want we want to be the answer to our prayer. We want to be a lot answering the question in our head. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna go talk to her as if she mind. No, no. Be patient. So this this patient, you you gotta remain attractive because listen, the a, a fish, they paying attention to that bait that splashed. It done went in the water. The fish on the ground getting to the mind of the fish. They saying, is this real? Oh, this got a string. Oh, they got it. You see that string right there? That ain't real. Somebody don't bite that one. Don't bite. They try to catch us. But real bait, real bait is natural. And he just told me, but I shouldn't be your natural self. Mm -hmm. Don't try to sound like him. Don't try to sound like this person. Be you and say this in the way that you would you, that, that you would say it. So I tell brothers, take the path. I tell sisters, take the path as your foundation. Once you get the foundation. Then put your personality into it. And oh my goodness, watch your cup run it over. So mm -hmm. remember rejection, you got to change the word N-O, transpose those letters around to it's on now. It's on. And don't run from that, run towards that. We taught to meet and overcome all obstacles in our path. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said as it relates to the Final Call newspaper, when they say no, they ain't saying no to the paper. They saying no to you. Mm. I said to myself, how is that? They don't even know me. How is yeah. that? And he said, that's the point. Mm. They don't know you. They don't know what this is. How they saying no? That's the point. It's yeah. your job to deliver a clear message what this is. And if they knew what this is, you would come back empty handed every day. Mm. So I don't know if I answered your question, but you got to be fired up now. So I'm ready. No, right. listen. <laughs> Hey, I don't even know if you answered it either, but <laughs> no, listen, that was beautiful. And you did, you did. I, I'm, I'm glad, I love how you were able to um, uh, conjunct the uh, rejection to um, real life situation and relationships. So that was needed. Okay. And a big, and big thing that I took from rejection was having patience and how important having patience is. And if we're able to change our perspective, of that no and switch it to on oh now it's on i'll keep on coming you know we'll be able to fight that fear of rejection so i love that that's key too. because listen yeah. if you pray for this person mm -hmm. and allah is working on doing see we don't understand that allah has the ability to change the thinking of people so this person probably said no but they went back thinking about it they went back thinking they are seeing you another week that happened to me one time where a sister was like, you, you are kind of handsome, but I had already I moved on. 
because my dumb butt was impatient. Mm -hmm. So just be patient. If you're praying for something, don't answer Allah's prayer. Let him answer the prayer. And then, that person may have, said, may have said, not today. But if you be consistent, see, a river that continues to flow mm -hmm. naturally cleanses itself. Mm -hmm. You can pee in it. You can, you can do all kinds of stuff. But if it can flow, it's going to naturally cleanse itself. Mm -hmm. Give up. Just keep going. Just keep going. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Praise be to Allah. I love that so much. And I need y'all. Come on now. What's up with the interactions, man? Put your comments in the comment box. I need some fire signs. Let me know how y'all feeling about this whole topic, the path, as we just discussed rejection, something that we all, all have been through. And we all need to learn how to handle it. So praise be to a lot. And if you all are enjoying this episode just as well as I am, please show your support by donating today to Cash S Dollar Signs Healing with Angelica to help sustain future episodes just like this. We almost to the, uh, what? What, you're the 89th? I think you're the 89th show. We're almost to the 100th show, y'all. Oh. Two years of this. Can y'all believe this? We almost there. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for y'all. So I just want to say thank y'all real quick. I'm grateful. And also, if you are enjoying all of the episodes here on Closing the Gap broadcast, CTG broadcast as well, please show your support and donate today. Information to donate will be shown on the screen below. I love you all. Now let's get back to today's episode, The Path with my brother, Hashim Hakim. I love your name, Hashim Hakim. Right, <laughs> yes, sir. So I, I I really want to know your um your thoughts on what strategies do we need or someone would need, or I'm sorry, what strategy do you suggest for recruiting new members into an organization, study group for or mosque? So I believe what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has us doing is working. And one of those ways is feeding our people in the community, um, feeding the homeless, um, going to uh, people's funerals, even whether you know them or not, that's a part of the human family, popping up and just, just a group of brothers popping up at a funeral. See, I believe in unity. I believe in, shout out to Golden Child with the unity. Yes. I believe in numbers as well. Um, one brother going door to door in the community is all praises due to Allah. But how about 5, 10, 20 with some sisters going door to door in the community? The impact is more profound when people see numbers. Even when I'm soldiering, I tell the brothers, they believe, but but Hashim, you got this side? I'm going to go to the other side. No, 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 no. Let's stay together. Let's show them what unity looks like. And your sales will be more, more efficient if we stay together. You sure? It's a it's a crowd of us right here. I'm telling you, the, when they see that unity, they're going to have their money hanging out the window way down there. And that's what <laughs> happens when they see us together. What's going on? Farrakhan speaking? That when it's just one of us, they're asking, uh, <laughs> you all right? Or, or, or is, it, is how much is that paper? But when it's 10, 20, they looking like, what's going on? Is Farrakhan in town? What's going on? So <laughs> unity, unity is real key. And when the sisters come out there, oh man. And the brothers, don't let no child be, don't, don't, a young man in a suit and a bow tie going door to door is just as impactful as we saw our young brother out of Atlanta on the drill team. Yes. It's like, look, and they might, listen, listen now, I'm trying to tell you, when we do things in a unified way, go to them details. Don't be, don't don't run from the detail. When you get a call from your lieutenant or captain, we going to feed the homeless, or we going door to door. We got a call out. Show up at them call outs. Mm -hmm. Cause that's, if you want to fish people in, you want people, listen, you, I, I remember how it used to be back in the day. I don't know if y'all used to go to them clubs, a party, uh, but uh, I did. And so you ever went to a party <laughs> <laughs> and it it wasn't jumping and you went in there, you leaving right back out. I mean, listen. But, but, I, but I'm gonna show you how to be the party starter. <laughs> to where people wanna go. And a brother said to me the other day, right here in St. Louis, 
I was surveying the land, looking for different areas to soldier in. And I was checking the terrain. And I said, do anybody soldier here? They said, no, we don't soldier here. I said, I'm about to bust this wide open. And, mm. I open, and we bust it wide open. And the people drink in the Final Call newspaper. Somebody mm. said, I said, what made you pick this area? I said, man, I'm, I'm looking at our people. Are they all over the place. I look for gas stations. I look for restaurants. I look for strip malls where people frequent. Our barbershop is there. Our mosque is down the street. Hold on, this this is it. So I asked the brother, uh, is jumping. He said, but I I think it's you. You the reason why it's jumping. I mm. said, but spirit has a lot to do with it now. Ooh. Spirit does, has a lot to do with it. You got to have that spirit out there. You got to make people be like, and you see them, they got their guns on them, but they forgot they had the gun on them when you put mm -hmm. the pants on them. So it's it's all about doing things in a unified manner. And that happens to our people. Out in St. Louis seems like everybody got a gun. Everybody got a gun. But I I don't see that. I see the God in them. And I said, hey, and then, <laughs> one time I said with a brother, hey, what you gonna do with that gun? Just shoot, shoot black people. <laughs> He looked, real. Me, okay. he looked up at me like, hey, OG, 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 OG. Then he hit his little, I, he hit his little, little. I said, what you going to do with I said, missile. What you going to do with that missile? Just shoot black people? You ain't going to shoot them? He, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. But <laughs> he hit his, he hit it. But the path makes you confident, too. So when it comes to recruiting, and there's a city that I was invited to go speak at to bring the path seminar to. And that was Homer, Louisiana. And that's a study circle. That's not even a study group. It's a study circle. Mm -hmm. And I took, I, I, I'm excited about uh, small numbers because I, I know the path works. And I told them, if y'all follow the path, y'all going to be a study group. And if you really follow the path, y'all can skip right to a mosque because all you need is 40 recruits. So I went out there. We went door to door. And people were saying, no, not today. One door we went to. The brother said yes. And I could tell that his mom or whoever he was living with was not with the nation. So when we went to go pick him up that Sunday, they ain't even open the door, but you can hear somebody in there. And then she opened the door. She said he went to the store. So we waited, we waited, we waited. He never showed up. But just recently, just recently, and I'm talking about this week, I'm talking about student minister William. In Homer, Louisiana, called me. He said, "You remember that brother that wouldn't come? He accepted last Sunday." Mm. Now, what if he didn't yes. go back to that house? What if he wasn't persistent? What if he just gave up at the first rejection or not today? But he went back to the same house, got the same guest. He came this time due to his persistence, and now that brother is the first timer in the processing class. So. You may hear some no's today. And that happens every time you soldier. They go, not today, not today. But they see me out there every week. One of the people told me, you must be the hardest working man in St. Louis. Because you be out here, brother. I mm. said, the hardest working, but I am working hard on your behalf for our people. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so persistence is key. Consistency is key. And numbers is key. Brothers calling me now in St. Louis. When you're going out, I want to go with you. When you're going out, I want to go with you. So spirit is key. So you got to have a beautiful spirit. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad say, work cheerfully. I don't care if I'm at UPS, but you ain't finna catch me there. I don't care if I'm at UPS or a grocery store. I'm going to have some fun. It's not going to be boring, slave-like to me. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun. You know, like the um, most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, work cheerfully. Yes. Got to work cheerfully, man. Yes. You know, like we got... Like man, like if 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 the people knew like what we really had, like we can really save a lot of people. So and and we knew we know how much this has impacted impacted our uh, impacted our lives. We should have no problem going out there to do the work and to get our people. Yeah, you know we dealing with just you know us, you know trying to deal with rejection and learning how to overcome it and, you know, our ego. I think sometimes our ego can kind of be in a way of how we handle <coughs> people and handle rejection. 
But, you know, once you keep in your mind that this is for a lie, you know, Ooh, wait. you know, this is for a lie. Like we, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna leave all the negativity, the ego, all of that out of the way. Well, you know that this is for a lot and what you're doing it for, your purpose, the mission, you, you, you go forward and you take charge. So think about think about think about a lot, right? Think about a lot. You said this is for a lot. Think about Master Father Muhammad. He said he would climb mountains 40 miles high and eat rattlesnakes to save one person. Mm. I'm not eating no rattlesnakes. <laughs> <coughs> and Climb in a mountain one mile high. But he said he would do that to save one. Then all the languages that he had to learn. Then he came from a whole nother continent. When Master Father Muhammad grew up, he said, I don't know what he said, but I can imagine. You know, some children want to be doctors, lawyers when they grow up. Master Father Muhammad said, when I grow up, I'm going to save my people. Mm. <coughs> Where they at? So he came. And we won't go to the person next door. Mm. Or, or, or some of us treat uh, what we believe in like we used to when we worked for McDonald's. When we got our work, we take that shirt off, turn our hat backwards. I don't work in the McDonald's. Mm. Why are you doing this? But you don't want to represent this. Ooh. Ooh, then we want a lot to be at our beck and call. Mm -hmm. Every time we're in trouble, we do that one prayer. You know that one prayer? I'll never do it again. God, if you take this away from me, I'll never do it again. <laughs> and we want him to be right there. But you won't even tell the neighbor next door. I'll be watching these games. You And I'm sad. My my, my, my team lost LSU, uh -huh. the LSU with Angela Reese. And, but I'll be looking at them fans. They ain't even playing. But they be in the game. They be with them wherever they go on road trips. Like, we got to cheer our, 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 our top believers that's doing this work on in the mosque. We got to put them in the announcement. We got to talk about the top seller of the final call. Don't wait just to the believers meeting for Brother Saad to announce it. We got to recognize the believers that's doing work in our mosque right now. Brothers and sisters. We got to recognize them. So... This is a beautiful thing when it's done and when all departments is done, when everything is done the right way. From the time that person get that final call newspaper to the time they come to the mosque, to the time they accept, all those need to be pleasurable experiences. Mm -hmm. When you come encounter with us, it got to be like your favorite drink, your f smoothie. It's so good. You're like, what's in here? Them okay. people got to be like, that person was so... I, what what what's in this paper when you done left them? Mm -hmm. I like the way they handle me. One sister just in Jacksonville, Florida, she said, I just came so you call me queen. I just came to hear you say queen. And I'm thinking, man, our people must be really stressed mm -hmm. or going through it. And don't nobody call this sister queen. And she come all the way to get a paper just to hear, you got yours, queen? Just to hear that. Mm -hmm. So our people are really going through it. Yeah. Yes. Listen, everybody living on this earth is going through it. Everybody living is going through a battle you know nothing about. And that makes me think about the Assistant Supreme Captain, Grandmaster Abdul Aziz, who really put me on the path. He said, Brother Hashim, when you out there dealing with our people, do you ever think that they can't be redeemed? And I said, no. He said, why you can't do why we can't be like that with one another? Mm. Why, why, why are we so judgmental with one another? Why we throw each other under the bus? Why we throw our wives and say our wives is, is no hope for this marriage? Why we? But, but with laws founds, we be on our best behavior. Man, that, that man changed my life. Shout out to Grandmaster Abdul Aziz and the National Training Seminars coming up pretty soon. So, Thank you for talking. Thank you for listening. I don't know what to say no more. I'm done on that question. <laughs> no, no, no. That was so beautiful. I love this. This is this is so exciting to me. Like, like getting getting these jewels and these gems. Just how we can be better and how we can go out here and get 
our people and how unity shout out to golden child again man i i really love what he got going on like unity yeah. is so important like it, it it can really cause a difference in how and in, in how we move and how we can affect a whole nation just with our unity so praise be to a lot well, let me talk about him now I just I just went I just <laughs> went to his album release party mm -hmm. in Chicago and some of the same people that support him supported me when I was in Chicago coming up with the rap group Soldiers at War and and they were surprised to find out but I said that's your son and this beautiful human being that Allah blessed us with in Golden Child brought in this same room different gang elements from the opposition to each other in the same room and they was on some unity. Mm. People with bodies on them was in the same room with with aldermen and lawyers and and I'm like this man done brought together the music industry, the streets, the political realm, Believers was in there. And his album is really like that. Now, my son, I know, I know, I used to say different things to him and my other son, Tyree, to get them to compete against each other, <laughs> to, to present them best, their best selves. And <laughs> I guess, <laughs> and, and Golden Child stuck with, I'm not selling out. I'm not going to be manipulating women. I'm not talking about the drug game. If I'm going to talk about the drug game, I'm going to talk about how it's hurting us. And yeah. it's a street element. And it's very difficult to teach or to take these teachings and make them appeal to many people from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. There's very few that can take these teachings and make it music to the ears of people who know nothing about the teachings. That's golden child, real skillful at speaking the language of who's in his straight path. Heck of a Mecca is another good one that's very skilled at speaking the language of multiple audiences, a vast different variety of diverse people. It's very difficult. So golden child, had, I was looking, I'm like, that, that's a GD right there. Mm -hmm. Vice Lord right there. Hold on, this is a, a record exec right here. This is an auto. This is the same publicist that used to be interviewing us back in the day. Now they're interviewing him, and I'm looking at him. And I was in there. His mom was in there. His siblings was in there. And I'm like, what he got going on is not for show. Yes. It's not, it's not entertainment. But he has taken the gift of speech, the gift of communication. And what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has said is the language of the youth. He has taken hip hop, which is the language of the youth, and is using it to fish people in. I met people who said, I, I came in the nation of Islam because of your son. Mm. Not a Final Call newspaper, through your son. Yes. So, but the Final Call newspaper, I got to say that because hip hop is so powerful. And the word is powerful because the person that fished me into the nation of Islam was going door to door. And I was 18 years old and he knocked on my mother's door. He must have knew something about me. But he didn't talk about, he asked me, have I ever heard of Farrakhan? I said, the same Farrakhan public enemy you be talking about? Mm. Yes. And we talked about rap. We weren't talking about the, the teachings. Mm. He spoke my language. By the time he was done talking, he said, you know Farrakhan right down the street? You want to go hear him speak? I said, what? See, I, I thought I didn't know Farrakhan was a person. I thought it was a movement. <laughs> but whatever public enemy was on, I was on. That's how rappers have that kind of influence and power. Whatever we own, people going to follow us. Children memorize whole songs, but might not even know how to do their homework, might not even know how to read. Mm -hmm. But they memorize them songs through the repetition. And what Golden Child is doing, y'all got to get this album War Cry. If you want a fishing tool, if you want a fishing tool, Go get young God from heck of a Mecca. If you want a fishing tool, I'm talking about, you want to fish the youth in, it might not be the final call first. Speak their language. It might be hip hop. 
Go get Golden Child album War Cry. That's going to be your fishing tool. Many people use that. Remember that brother that freestyled with Jay-Z and DMX? Mm -hmm. You remember that? He right here. And I, I said, oh, man, you trying to give me the freestyle, brother. And I freestyle, and they be like, oh, man. Yeah. So they got to see us outside of a, asking for a donation or a bean pie. They got to see we real human beings. Mm -hmm. Don't let that bow tie fool you. Don't okay. let this headpiece fool you now. We, we bought that life now. We bought that action. Okay, listen. So, so when they find out, are these real brothers and sisters? I mean, real, like genuine, authentic people that care. Ooh, I got caught in the zone again. Thank you for that. <laughs> Listen, ain't nothing wrong with getting caught in the zone. I am loving every single thing that you are speaking about. Praise be to Allah. Now, I see here we do have a question down here for my brother, Tony Muhammad. We're going to put this up on the screen real quick. And thank you for your patience, brother Tony. So I see here we have Asalaamu Alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan Kareem, brother Tony. Um, it says, on the path. Can you expound on how the Final Call newspaper is not simply the product that you are to present to the people, but you are the product itself? Beautiful question. Beautiful question, Brother Tony. For example, if I'm a lost found and I ride up on you, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at what you got on. I'm looking at I'm looking at your shoes. Black people, for some reason, we got to look at your shoes for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> if you got on some nice shoes, we might listen to you. But if a brother or sister is, is dressed well and they're attractive, I'm more susceptible to listen to you. Well, so when we're doing the work, we don't want to look like panhandlers. Mm. We don't want to look bummy. We don't want to have dirt all under our fingernails, breath ferocious. Brother Hashim, <laughs> a, a brother asked me, uh, last week soldier i started laughing so hard he said when you out there with the people how do you tr not offend them and i'm like the path works he's like you know he's no with the ramadan brand i'm like mm. <laughs> i said man i ain't finna be all up in their face like that but he said yeah. <laughs> and he caught me midstream and handed me some mouthwash i said are you trying to tell me <laughs> mm. You try to tell me something? He said, no, I just want you to be right. See, when you're talking to our people, they looking at that. You point to the final call, talking about this cost $2. And under your fingernails, it looked like you've been working under an engine on a car somewhere. Ooh. So, so brother, mm. is right. Brother Tony is right. You have to be attractive. You are the product. They looking at you, man. Black people, I don't know. We we visual. And, man, look. and that's one, one, one of the things somebody I grew up with said. Man, they clean. Them jokers be clean. Yeah. Them guys, brother Hashim, be rolling with them dudes. And, and they clean. Everybody talking about they clean, they clean, they clean. We want to look the part. So you are the product. I don't care if it's a newspaper, a bean pie, Savings Day gift. Now, you know, the 2025 Savings Day, kit, Savings Day gift just opened up now. Mm -hmm. 2025. And you attractive. Now, I got to give a shout out to brother Ben X. If your digital real estate, talking about your social media page, your IG page, your Facebook page, your Twitter page, your thread page, this is digital real estate. This is your property. If it's attractive, people are going to be on your page. Mm -hmm. Ben's watching your videos. Can't wait for you to put up a post. But if your page is always dull, always negative, always talking about what the sisters ain't doing, always talking about what the brothers ain't doing, you're going to have very little traffic. Mm -hmm. But if your digital real estate is popping, it's some motivational for the minister. You some motivational for Mother Tynetta. Some motivational, some most motivational, something inspiring. People coming to learn. People coming to your page like, Hey, hey, hey. And I get this all the time. I, I'm like, I get a lot of followers just based on my post. Mm. And so if your page is attractive, I know my digital real estate is the product too. Yes. So you're not going to come to my page and not laugh. You're not going to come to my page and not get inspired. You're not going to come to my page and not learn something. So you and I are the product. And when they see the before and after picture, oh, they brother used to do this. That's mm -hmm. to do that. Now look at him. That's how that brother did me when he came to my door. 
I was mesmerized. He was talking hip hop and he was older than me. I'm like, man, you don't even listen to rap. <laughs> but he studied hip hop. <laughs> Shout out to Young Kanda Don. Young <laughs> Kanda Don, that's another one who studies what the young generation is listening to and taught me. But I seen you got to listen. Maybe you may not like Lotto. You may not like Glorilla, but you got to you go. You may, you may not like him, Flo Rida, but you got to study. You may not like Sexy Red, mm -hmm. but these young folks is listening to Sexy Red. Yes. So you got to study that, take something positive out of what she's saying, and then mm -hmm. when you're talking to young folks, you might bust one of them lines, and, be, and they'd be like, what you know about that? And so you got to speak the language of the youth. Yes. You got to always be up on modern times. You got to be, you can't, can't be stuck with, have you ever went over your friend's house to eat and the food just ain't no good? You can't be stuck in the 70s. You can't be stuck in, don't push me because I'm close. No, no. <laughs> Look at you. You got to know what these young folks listen to if you're going to fish them in. Mm -hmm. I, got, I got some brothers I'm working with and they straight active in the street. And we had to tell them to take their guns back to the car. And they, but, but based on the way we handled them, they took their guns to the car and they've been coming to the mosque, coming to FOI class. Then going back in the street, but I seen, I didn't know that the moon used to be a part of the earth, learning all kinds of stuff. Yes. So never judge nobody, never judge them, but you got to always remain attractive. Get your hair cut. The Supreme Captain, shout out to the Supreme Captain, for the Mustafa Farrakhan. He said, get your hair cut. You don't want your hairline crawling. Well, you can see the hairline coming. <laughs> <out. laughs> your hairline coming, it's connected <laughs> to your beard because you don't want to get a line in. No, stay groomed. You don't want hair all up in your nose when you're talking to people. They look like you got an afro on your nose. Mm. Stay grown. Groom your eyebrows. You say, I don't want to cut my eyebrows, but you're looking like Scrooge. No, cut them eyebrows, man. Talking about you got a pinky nail that look like Lee Pressons. No, cut your nails, bro. Oh, no way. Uh -uh. No, Come on did. now. Come on now. <laughs> Speak the language of the people. Look clean, be presentable, and be attractive. Mm. <laughs> Oh Lord, I love this energy. I see a sister <laughs> said, "What about the '90s, though?" Hey, listen, that's that's my era. There ain't nothing wrong with the '90s. Listen, if you speak of a '90s baby, you 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 might want to. We just went to an R&B concert. We did security <laughs> for an R&B concert. Shanice Wilson was there, Glenn Lewis was there, and it was sold out. I'm talking about thousands of people. So you got to speak the language. Ain't nothing wrong with the '80s. Ain't nothing wrong with the '70s. But if you're talking about uh, 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 Kumo, Kumo D to somebody who never heard of Kumo D, you're not speaking his language. Mm -hmm. It's foreign. Yeah, so you got to, ain't nothing wrong with the 90s, but if you speak to somebody from the 90s, you might be able to color. pull up Shanice Wilson. I like your smile. That's their language. But music, a hit song is timeless. Or you might want to pull out, what's my group? Stole for real. Have you ever dreamed of candy cola? Listen, I don't know why you're talking about the 90s. The okay. 90s, I'm going to speak the 90s to the 90s. And I'm going to speak 2024 to 2024. Yeah. All is all of us in the past. Yes, yes, yes. The <laughs> 90s is when I came into the nation. Ain't nothing wrong with the 90s. <laughs> Listen, you know, I, I, hey, I, I was born in the 90s. Ain't so. nothing wrong with them. You know, you you can get me off some nineties, you know. So yes, 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 yes. But I love that the importance of speaking the people's language, especially if it depending on who it is that you're trying to target. And we know our young folks, and I thought about that too. Like, you know, you're right. Unfortunately, you know, you don't listen to sexy red, but they love her. So we gotta figure out what's going on with that. You know, they they love them Cardi B's and them money bag yo. So Come on, talk that talk to the student ministers. You got to drop a line or two. You bringing the streets into the mosque, but you talking about the wheel only. You talking about the diameter of the planet Earth only. Mm -hmm. You bringing the streets to the mosque, and you ain't listen. A master of ceremony, a real MC, can speak to the whole audience. That's the minister. You see the minister. At Savior's Day, first of all, shout out to the Honorable Minister Lewis Fowler. Hey, hello. At Savior's Day, did you see how long he was on his feet standing up? 
I was tripping. I'm like, oh, okay, Hulk, Hulk, we got, we got, we got some more decades up in him. I see. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> hey, but he Amazing. spoke the language. He and the same day before that, he spoke to Gail about how Gail was coming at Snoop and Kobe Bryant, and the minister is right down to modern times. Yes. So, but anyway, back to brother in uh, Louisiana. That brother came. He's accepted. Now he's processing. I adopted them, a study group, all the way in Louisiana. I'll be teaching this computer right here, this digital real estate we talking on. We reaching thousands of people, Sister Angelica, and I hope this be your most your most powerful streaming this uh, oh. podcast. I hope this go all over the joint. Listen, it's gonna happen. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Praise yeah. be to Allah. Yes, yes. Praise be to Allah. Woo! This was a this was a beautiful topic, a beautiful conversation. I was really, really just hyped up about talking about this because I just know that I'm definitely somebody who wants to improve in just my way of speak and how I can connect with people. Just me personally, with me having my own brand, just wanting to really be out here to really save our people and have that that the special uh, I want to say characteristics about myself that will be able to attract the people and you know just be me being authentic authenticity is is power yeah. it is so you know and and you know me you know i well, i've been in the nation for like a year and a half having been haven't been in the nation long however yes i ain't been i, I just i'm a little baby in the nation yeah. so you've been doing interviews before you got registered yes <laughs> Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I register. I, uh, I I I started my podcast. So yes, yes. But I, the nation had such a impact on me before I got registered. You know, I I just said, man, this is home. I need to. What am I playing? So I, I joined. Represent, yep. Sister Angelica, represent. You know what? You know. Represent. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. Praise be to Allah. So. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so very much, Brother Hashim, for joining me today to discuss this amazing, profound, and important topic, the path. I would also like to thank my amazing audience and my healing tribe for joining us today. I pray that this episode was informative, valuable, and most importantly, healing to you all. Also, be sure to share, like, follow, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any upcoming episodes on any of your favorite podcast station. Closing the Gap broadcast on Facebook, CTG broadcast on YouTube, and Healing with Angelica podcast on Facebook and YouTube to help spread this message of healing to those in need. Also, if you are ready to start your healing journey and just don't know where to start, we always ready to heal, but we don't know where to start. Where does this healing begin, right? If you're ready to start your healing journey and don't know where to start, I am offering free one-on-one -on -one calls only for the month of Ramadan. And it's almost over with now. So y'all better hop in now. Ramadan so, Mubarak, everybody. I forgot. Yes. Yeah, Ramadan Kareem. Yes, yes, yes. We're almost towards the end. Oh, my gosh. It's been so beautiful. I don't want it to end. It's been, it's been a great experience. So, But, however, yes, yeah, only for the month of Ramadan. So, go ahead and take that offer. Praise be to Allah. And also, um, more information to schedule will be shown in the comment box below, including Healing Tribe merch, Healing with Angelica merch, and more. Now on sale for the month of Ramadan. It's almost over. 25% off your order today. Also, also a friendly reminder, you guys that any purchases that you make is to help to sustain and support healing with Angelica. So praise be to Allah. Also, if anyone you know yourself are in need of, need of a prayer, healing with Angelica would like to send a special prayer to you. And you can do this by emailing us at healwithangelica at yahoo.com. Brother Hashim, <laughs> before we end today's show, do you have any closing remarks for our audience today? I would like to say, if you see something you want, pray on it and go get it. Meet and overcome all the obstacles in your path. And if you done prayed on something and you don't get it, you done prayed on it. That's God's way of telling you not that, not that, or not yet. Keep going. Keep going. Never quit. And so this is the brother that I've become today. 
I used to be the runner. I used to be the quitter. I used to be the give upper. I don't think those are words. <laughs> <laughs> but now, but now, it's going to take Allah himself to sit me down. And so, Ooh, because I I am, I'm at it right now. And, and as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is still strumming my heart with his finger. Okay. Still going at 90 years old, 90 Ooh. years young, he got his foot up the devil's backside as if he Bruce Lee. And he is the spiritual Bruce Lee. And so we got a beautiful, powerful leader. That's the example. That's the example. Don't quit fighting. Don't quit representing what you believe in. Be your authentic self. Get on the path and fight for Islam. You know why? Because we already done won. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, that's right, Brother Hashim. I love that. Praise be to Allah. Again, thank you all for joining us today. And we leave you all as we came. Assalamu alaikum. Peace, healing, and life. <laughs>